Hey man, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Yeah, we uh, we were gonna do the Skype yeah. recording yesterday, but then you had a fire. There's a fire, the and book. I was here for <laughs> I'm here for 12 hours today, yeah. just doing like press and more press and more press. I uh, just came from Neil Strauss and his uh, his recording partner Gabby Reese. Yeah. For their podcast, excited to see you. Awesome. We yeah. got breather. Yeah, we got breather. They're not sponsoring this. No, but they're they not. should be. <laughs> We're working on it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, working on it. <laughs> How are you doing? Good man. Good man. How are you? Doing doing well. Awesome. Cool. Well, you know what I what I wanted to start talking about is you gave a TED talk, not TEDx TED talk when you were the day you turned 19 or the day before you turned 19 day before turning 20 so it was the last day okay. i was ever a teenager yeah that's awesome the title of the ted talk which i want to ask you about is why young people today hold more power than ever before and i was curious if you could you could talk about if that. i could answer <laughs> yeah, give a brief version and of course we'll link people to the actual ted talk but. yeah so that talk came out of research i did for two billion under 20 which was my first book uh that came out in 2015 like july 2015 uh, in that book, I profiled stories from 75 top-performing young people who were about 20 and under at the time of writing for the book, because it's a collection of their writing yeah. and not just like my interviews and distillation of their writing. Yeah. Uh, and so the whole book has all these different storylines of you know this Olympian and this YouTuber and this singer, this actor, this scientist, this kid who built a nuclear reactor in his garage at 17. Wow. Like really nuts of type stories, <laughs> uh, and the, the real line that you could pull from it was like, well, how do these people have the ability to do this in the first place? Why yeah. are they so powerful and like capable yeah. of doing these things? Because two, three generations prior, it would take like governments to do the same thing or the super wealthy to do the right. same thing. And the the example I always love to use is how in the 1930s. It took the work of three governments, seven years, 130,000 people, and $26 billion by today's standards to create the first atomic bomb. Yeah. Meanwhile, you have Conrad Farnsworth, who built a nuclear reactor in his garage at 17 for $5,000. <laughs> wow. Granted, it wasn't going to like blow anyone up. <laughs> he might have blown himself up, but it wasn't going to blow up his city or like yeah. his country. Right. Uh, but still, like the capabilities are eerily similar, Yeah. and it's so much less resources, so much less time. He only did that in, in like... A year or two years of work versus seven years 5k versus 26 billion dollars like it's just wow. mind-blowing and so t like time and time again i saw these type of stories coming out of the first book mm -hmm. and so the ted talk shares that it, it kind of went into the you know ability to find problems to solve unlike ever before and the ability that we can communicate at global speed you know unlike ever before like that we That's take amazing. that for granted yeah. but it you can get things done faster. You have access to information quicker. You can figure out what problems to solve quicker. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just so much benefit that comes from that. Uh, and then you have you know the ability to collaborate with others at mass scale. You know, really in the 2000s and the the 2010s. Is that what we're calling this? I think so. The tens. <laughs> the tens. Uh, the two tens. Two <laughs> uh, yeah, tens. We Let's can. Uh, yeah, we can collaborate like unlike ever before, and you can have these global movements. You know, if you're yeah. the other site like Influence, if you can find the million or five million or yeah. ten million people across the world that'll really, really dig this content. Yeah, uh, and you can go even more niche if you wanted to. You can have a site for redheaded entrepreneurs <laughs> who wear black shirts <laughs> and like Rubik's cubes, <laughs> and like you'll probably yeah, find right here. <laughs> you'll probably find fifty thousand people across the world that fit that bill or enjoy that niche for yep. whatever reason uh and so that is unparalleled to history and it really allows us to do these sort of crazy things uh and so totally you know on and on again there was all these different themes that we covered in the first book and you know that's what i shared at the ted talk yeah that's awesome the first book is called two billion under 20. yeah yeah and that you can get on amazon or finding a retailer all the normal stuff. <laughs> all over the place, yeah. Well, it's interesting what you say about that because I feel like social media and online influencers today have, in some areas, have more power than the modern media. They do. We, Absolutely. We, there's influencers that can reach 10 million people with this thing instantly. Yeah. I'm, I, we're marketers. So, like, yeah. I, you know, I'm, I was getting ready to launch 3 billion under 30, my next book. Yeah. Uh, 
and I was watching how Tim Ferriss was getting ready to do his book launch for Tools of Titans because he's always at the leading and cutting edge of marketing, especially for yep. books. And I was watching, he would go to CNN, he would go to Time, all these different media yeah. outlets, and hop on their Facebook a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was not an article. Using like, them untraditionally. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just just like doing that. Yeah, right, right. You know, and he didn't really do any events other than one or two. Instead, he did a few podcasts. Yeah. Uh, and then social media. He had right. like a bunch of different social tiles that yeah. he probably didn't even touch. Yeah. It was probably his team and just systemically yeah. going out. He made sure that everyone from Triple H to... Matt Mullenweg was shouting him out at a certain time. Yeah. Uh, so very interesting how it's changed. You know, it totally. used to be this radio tour. Right, right. And, uh, or, you know, stacking a bunch of speaking engagements mm-hmm. together and having people or these companies, like, buy thousands of books or hundreds of books. Those yeah. are hard sells. Like, I oh, tried. Totally. Yeah. Uh, so it's just really interesting to see where the marketing world is going uh, and, you know, it's a lesson to all of us. Like, if you want to get your message out to the world or whatever it is you care about out to the world, you really mm-hmm. have to start building your own distribution yes. channels, you a do. media company. Yeah. Even if it's not a big one like Influence, it may be a micro yeah. media company. Exactly. Or you have a blog that 10,000 people follow, 100,000 yeah. people follow. Build your social media accounts. Like, totally. Start grabbing as much as possible. Uh, and you can always collaborate with the other people that have those, which is my biggest strength mm-hmm. to date is I've... I don't have a big social media following today. Mm-hmm. Uh, that could change in half a year or a year. Right. It probably will. Uh, I don't have a big email list today. It's going to change in half a yep. year, a year. Uh, but I have a mass, you know, 75 yep. people from my next book uh, that have over 50 million combined social media followers and over 250,000, you know, legit people on their email list. And so yeah. that's a lot of, uh, you know, credibility that I can bring to the table. It's a lot of uh, exposure for these mm-hmm. messages that we can leverage. Right. Which most people, you know, I, that's my skill is being able yeah. to have those partnerships and those collaborations yes. and get people to buy into those ideas. Uh, but, you know, having your own distribution would give me more leverage to do that. Totally. So, totally. you know, takeaways are like, you know, build your own distribution so you can mm-hmm. get your ideas out into the world and not have to rely on the media, not have to rely on anyone else. Yeah. And then, you know, you're going to want to collaborate, but by having your own distribution, you'll have more leverage to collaborate. Yeah, because what I love about what you just said, and I totally agree with this, instead of competing with all these people, you could, the people in your book, you could treat them as, oh, they're competition, they might have their own book one day, they might, you know, maybe yeah. we, we might have our own books one day. But instead of competing with people, you're collaborating. And yeah. I think that's really powerful. Yeah, and I'm, I'm like all about practical value with this, yeah. so I'm not going to be like, yeah. woo, 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 <laughs> yeah. like crazy. Uh, but hopefully this is, you know, beneficial to influence the audience totally. and, and all totally. that. One thing I want to touch on there, and I think this is part of the process for people in doing with something like you're doing, is, and it's funny because I feel like every time we talk about somebody, I'm like, oh, I should introduce you to this person or that person. It's like, you already know them. <laughs> so what I'm getting at there is you've built this incredible network. You know, you you know everybody I know, it seems like. You know all these people, very successful people at a very young age. Um, you've built an insane network. What do you... You know, I think there's a lot of bad advice about building a network. Like, oh, go to an event and hand out a thousand business cards. You know, it's like, yeah. what what do you tell, especially young entrepreneurs? Like, what is what is the real way to like to build a network like you've done? I would say there's two big steps or fundamentals. Yeah. Uh, the first is just to be a good human. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, everyone I you agree. come into contact with, you know, try and provide value to them. Be respectful. You don't know who's who or when you're gonna have a conversation with that person long term, yeah. or even if someone shoots you down at the beginning, like you're gonna get in touch with them later on. Yeah. Um, like we didn't connect right away. It took us yeah. a few months to like yeah. finally get on a call and then like finally meet up yeah, in person. Yeah. while. And after that, like we've been going and like doing you know great stuff together. But yeah. you just have to be a good person. You know, have high integrity. Like yeah. if you say you're gonna do something, do yeah. it. Yeah. If you <laughs> like, <laughs> it should be basics, but unfortunately, it's not in mm-hmm. 2017. Right. And the people that have these soft skills are going to get much farther ahead, regardless of the technology or mm-hmm. the tools that they're using to, to share their message and to share their work. So that's fundamental number one. The second one that might be more revelatory <laughs> is uh, I, you know, people talk about doing an 80-20 on your time or an mm-hmm. 80-20 on the customers that you have for your business and where you make money. You know, also do an 80-20 of 
who you spend time with. Yeah. And so I, I like that. really am conscious about spending time with people I deem as super connectors. Yeah. And these are people that are, you know, again, high integrity, really well regarded in their field and also very connected in their field. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so you're, you're a super connector. You know, a lot of people in the internet marketing space and the media space and the mm-hmm. entrepreneurial thought leader space. Yeah. And so I, try and give as much value to people like you and spend time with you and build like meaningful relationships where, you know, it, it's known that I actually care about you as a person right, right, right. Uh, and tr- try and provide value. And I, over time that has an exponential effect on your network because mm-hmm. other super connectors know this principle, whether they like say it or not. Yeah. you like, so if you go to a dinner party of theirs, everyone else at the table is going to be a fucking badass. Right, right. <laughs> I don't know if we can curse. Yeah, but, sure, why not? <laughs> uh, yeah, so like I, you know, it's really hard to get the ball rolling. And yeah. so you know, not everyone starts with a network. Yeah. In fact, I started with a negative network. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so my like... You knew negative people. <laughs> yeah, my, my like earliest failure point was uh, I, I got started at 15 as an entrepreneur and I made yeah. like every single business mistake you can think of when I mm. had my first thing. The biggest mistake I made was poor mentor selection. Mm. And the guy who was helping me get my first idea off the ground, uh, I found out he had served time in prison for securities yeah. fraud on Wall Street. Lovely. <laughs> uh, he was actually like cellmates with Steve Madden, so it's very oh, wow. Wolf of Wall Street esque. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally, like the closest you can get yeah, to yeah, that yeah. source. Um, and so, yeah, at 16, that I was at this like negative network. Yeah. Like, not only did I not know anyone, the one person I really knew in the business world, like, former white collar convict with low integrity. <laughs> so what you're really saying is you got started one year before me at 15 because I started as an entrepreneur <laughs> at 16. <laughs> there you go. Well, it's 16 is like when the when I actually learned from that experience and yeah. turned it into a positive. And so I, I reached out to the first super connector that I wanted to learn from, uh, this guy, David Hassel. Mm. He's the CEO of a company called 15.5. Mm. Uh, it's a venture back startup in Silicon Valley. Mm. And I read an article on on uh on him in forbes called the most connected man you don't know in silicon valley yeah uh i reached out to him like because i i wanted to model this guy like yeah. i wanted to have the the dinner parties that he had and he had you know people like tim ferris and warren buffett's former pilot and pro soccer players like all coming to his dinner parties mm. but he also had a real impact on people's lives like the the founders of summit met because of david wow. and like there's multiple stories of you know very meaningful organizations or even romantic relationships meeting because of David. Yeah. And so that's the kind of person I wanted to be like. I wanted totally. to be this connector that actually like helped people's <laughs> lives and built businesses. And so no, I agree, 100%. reached out, you know, offered to work unpaid in exchange for his mentorship because at 16, all I have is time to, uh, yeah. as my leverage or as my, my value proposition. Now I have other ways to provide value. Right, right. Um, but you know, I, I found out the way I could provide value over time. And then, as David introduced me to people in his network, as I went to events with him, I started meeting more and more super connectors. And now it's it's relatively easy because yeah. I know a lot of people in my network. I you know I actively focus on spending time with the enriching people, the, mm-hmm. the super connectors who can really push my career forward. Yeah, uh, and I can help them in return because I have this whole. Yeah. You know, other part of my network that they might not have been introduced to. And so yeah. it's very easy now for me to make these connections, right. uh, but very valuable to them. And so those are the two like big fundamentals. If you're talking about like relationship to, relationship building and, and actually building a network or building influence is like one, like have the fundamental down of just being mm-hmm. a nice person <laughs> and a high integrity person that does what you say you're going to do. Yeah. And then really uh, be conscious of who you spend your time with, focus on, spending time and building meaningful relationships with super connectors as much as possible Mm -hmm. uh, and it'll get easier over time and and the effects on your business on your personal life will have an exponential you know effect i love that of just be a good person because i feel like some while there's advanced strategies like you gave the basics of just doing that (laughs) doesn't change it doesn't change like it's so important to Make meaningful no, connections. No matter how many Instagram pictures you take with fancy cars, or <laughs> wouldn't no matter how many beaches yeah, you're on, yeah. and you take selfies, like it just doesn't change. I think if I think also people are afraid to go personal. You know, like I've met your girlfriend. You you met my dog on the phone yesterday. Like <laughs> no, I'm serious. But like there's 
there it's okay to go personal and i just got grilled on neil's podcast because his podcast yeah. is called the truth barrel yeah so normally you're in a 220 degree barrel sauna oh man uh with him and, and gabby reese who's a. I don't even know if i could speak i don't, I don't know if gabby's questions. an olympian but she was like one of the highest ranked uh went pro female volleyball players and like was in movies and stuff like she's a yeah. big deal as well and neil's yeah. a big deal in in the odd you know author entrepreneurial space um I guess I can edit that out. Yeah, we'll edit that out. Uh, um, let me jump into so let's. See. But yeah, like with with Neil's show, he challenges people to be super authentic and to tell the truth. It's called the Truth Barrel, and yeah. so I, I like really hope my my parents <laughs> don't watch that and like whatnot. Uh, and not that I was saying anything bad about them, it was just pointing out uh, truths that led to me becoming who I am and yeah. kind of putting it out on the line what I'm bad at, what I'm great at, like all that. Uh, and I, I think it builds like that. That's one of the ways to build a meaningful relationship totally. with someone is if you break down the barriers and you actually show them who you are. Yeah. Like it pays to be your weird self. Totally. You, yeah. We're all weird in some way. Everyone's fucking weird. So. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's weird. Seriously. Brian's like, oh, I'm gonna put a Rubik's cube in every video I do from now on. It's like, this one right here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but speaking with that, you know what I'm really interested in too is everyone talks about successes, right? And it's. But going with what you just said, I think people also find failures or struggles more relatable because they say, ah, I'm going through that same thing right now. What would you say if I asked you, maybe like a truth barrel, <laughs> um, what's like, what was, what were one of your biggest struggles up until this point as an entrepreneur or failures, whatever one you think? So I've left a lot of money on the table, yeah. I think, yeah. uh, in order to get an exponential return and what yeah. i mean by that is i've had a i've had a marketing consulting firm for the last three years called kleiner ventures and i've had amazing clients like number yeah. one new york times bestselling authors and yeah. vc backed startups and olympians and whatnot but i've only taken on four to six projects a year and mm -hmm. purposely capped how big that company was growing uh, in order to spend maybe 20 percent of my time paying the bills and yeah. you know making a little more to pay team bills uh, and then the other 80 percent of the time i've been investing in two billion under 20 in Three billion under thirty, uh, because I think those are the ones that could have an exponential, you know, impact for me. Where yeah. if the if this book does really well and everything that follows from that does well, like that in one year could make up for all the money I've left on the table. Yeah. You know, in the tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands at this point, uh, you know, in ten years. Right. So uh, it's a struggle though at the same time because as an entrepreneur you like there's there's cash flow issues totally yeah so you know if that's your strategy you might have times where you get closer to broke than you want to be and i've, I've been there before uh and it's not pleasant but mm. you, you learn to sell your way out of it and so mm. there's positives that come from that or you know just like letting like checking your ego at the door and instead yeah. focusing on the the strategy and the logic behind those decisions yeah you know it's it's easy to say oh you could have just picked up more clients and you know done all this hard work necessary to have that potential big right. hit but it's not that's not how it works if right. you're really focusing on that big hit and yeah it's i think it makes sense because you only need one of those like in a decade and you're good yeah uh versus like this kind of incremental rise you could have an exponential one but at the same time when when friends are having you know their own incremental rises and like it, it's just again you got to check your ego out the door and for a totally. lot of us it, that's hard like it, yeah you know, I, I have ego, you have ego, yeah, like some are bigger than others and some we know how to, to cope with, Yeah. but that's a, that's an ongoing challenge. So absolutely. I think, and I think also in our society, the problem, if you want to call it that, is that we're so money focused as a society. And I think our slash both, well, your generation, I think we're in sort of the same millennial <laughs> gender. I guess you consider yourself a millennial, right? Yeah. A young millennial. Um, you're an older millennial. I'm a lot older millennial. <laughs> um, he's so, polished. He's better. He's better. <laughs> you know, we still care about money. I'm generalizing here, but we still care about money. But we're doing things for to create more impact for different reasons than just the money. So, you know, another example is, you know, you've built this world-class network. So even if you didn't have millions of dollars sitting in the bank, you've got this amazing network that you can you can utilize for a lack of a better word to you know let's say nothing else works i'm sure you could go get a job make six figures a year oh yeah easily easy. right so you've you've built up this you've built up this empire regardless of money so it's not what i'm saying is it's not just about money 
Yeah, I like I've had like ridiculous lifestyle experiences that yeah. few people could have. Uh, like one of the three billion under thirty contributors is the youngest person to fly around the world solo. Yeah. So when I got trapped in the snowpocalypse in <laughs> January 2016, uh, and had that. and really wanted to make it out to Sundance because it was that was gonna be my second date slash time hanging out with my girlfriend and yeah. it was also a, a stopover point to a business meeting in san francisco and then my flight back yeah like i was able to call him up and like yeah. got a flight from new york to chicago so i can make the second leg of the flight because the first one was canceled yeah and like without a network i would never be able to do that yeah. and like oh, we totally. had we had fun in the process like i brought an entire pizza into the cockpit of the plane <laughs> and we just That's like amazing. we just ate it and it was great yeah and, yeah uh simple simple things in life yeah but i've, I've had a lot of different experiences mm. like that uh however random or, or funny there was like another one was at uh south by southwest in 2016 uh one of my mentors was the former chief revenue officer of magical and he told me like three days before the event he's like you got to come and mm. i'll give you a ticket to the vip area of magical house if you come so i like fuck it i just booked a ticket nice went out and uh ended up at a influencer party for snapchat celebrities mm -hmm. and all of them were wearing fruit costumes <laughs> so <laughs> i had this like banana costume on oh, and, you were... and i was part of this like semi world record breaking attempt for most dancing fruit in one place so i was like <laughs> on stage with uh many of people who have become yeah. friends now like yeah. virginia salas castillo Cyrene yeah, yeah. q uh there's a few other people there that i had met for the first mm -hmm. time uh and then they introduced me to like sean Duras and Jake Paul and like all these other book contributors nice. of mine and that's like yeah. 20 million combined social media followers and four people <laughs> all of whom are now in, in my book and all because of, kind of on there's a there's a collaborative effort to our yeah. success now where I'm more successful every time Jake gets another like yeah. on uh, on Facebook which is awesome that's amazing and you know without a network none of these experiences would right, be possible right. both for the career upside and just for fun and like lifestyle yeah. and having fun with friends like why totally what what does the money mean if you don't have anyone to share those experiences with exactly. in the first place totally yeah speaking of your book and um i want to talk about that more but you've worked with new york Times bestsellers you this is your second book now mm -hmm. and it's you're become this like master book marketer like i could just tell from your product launch experience and doing books that you really know what you're doing when you launch books so somebody that let's say they want to launch a book they don't really know necessarily where to go how to start what do you suggest to those people? We have a lot of people that want <laughs> to write. It should be a whole like yeah. hour. Um, <laughs> Give us the uh, couple quick uh, tips. Yeah. So the first is to figure out why it is you're writing a book, both from yep. the message standpoint and then from the business building standpoint. Is it, let me ask you a question. Is it ego sometimes when someone wants to write a book? Like I. Found, oh, absolutely. I found some people that just, they because that's and I, I don't want to cut you off, but that's exactly I think that's where your point is going. That I see people that say I want to write a book. I'm going to be great. I'm going to be a bestseller. It's like, well, but why are you doing it? Well, I, I think the ego comes into play both in why you're writing the book from a mission standpoint, like what message do you want to share regardless of money? Yeah. And then also the, the money goals. Uh, ego can actually prevent you from having the best business upside. Mm. Uh, and what I mean by that is, you know, let's, let's assume you have a really good mission and reason for writing a book. Like not everyone should write a book, yeah. but let's say you have a good reason for writing a book. Yeah. Now you have to decide uh, between like three general publishing options, one of which sucks. Yeah. Uh, you have the self-publishing world and, and there's a bunch of options there. You have traditional publishing, which is going with one of the big publishing mm -hmm. houses, getting an advance, uh, having it in bookstores etc and then there's like hybrid publishing in the middle mm. hybrid sucks like i've i've yet to find a very yeah. high quality hybrid publishing company um most authors when they when you talk about ego want to go with traditional publishing because they have a lure of making a new york times list and uh having their book in bookstores and all that and or they want to get like a million dollar uh what's it called million dollar advance, advance and, yeah and like the reality of the matter is that there's more and more people who want to write books mm -hmm. and so the competition is higher than ever right, to right, actually right. like hit a new york times list or to even get a book deal yeah. and you know you have to sell about ten thousand books in a very formulaic way mm -hmm. in one week to hit wow. a new york times list that's about wow. 200 grand in you know transactions wow which you publishers are not going to get for you like yeah. they suck at their job when it comes to marketing uh so you have to have your own platform in the first yep. place you know popular podcast a popular blog a yeah. big email list uh and that's when you'll first start getting considered even for a book deal right more or less like trying to hit a new york times list 
Totally. And so a lot of people go into it, uh, and they're, they're, that's their goals, rather than using a book to serve as a, a lead generation platform for their consulting business or you know, use it as a way to build a following or mm-hmm. use it in some other way or even just the money from the book itself mm-hmm. uh, where they can more directly track what they're doing mm. uh, and so I you know I, I went with a traditional publisher the first time got yep. a really bad advance uh, mm. but whatever like went through that experience I thought it was yep. important to kick off totally. the the book series in that way mm-hmm. uh, and and like we got an Amazon bestseller which that's that's, good. that's complete bullshit actually is it yeah I could give you an article for the show notes but uh, <laughs> because Amazon is all these subcategories you can uh, literally become an Amazon best-selling author tonight with three dollars and five minutes uh, Ryan so Holiday's business partner did that. Hide it in a subcategory somewhere. Yeah, he 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 took a picture of his foot, <laughs> put it, put that on Amazon. I did read about. It. I do remember this now. <laughs> uh, he put that on Amazon and yeah. then had three of his friends buy it at ninety nine cents in some like random subcategory, and he was a number one best selling author. <laughs> and so then like that, it's uh, if you yeah, Google like foot book, you'll see this whole like media madness because like everyone covered this because he he did like a a tell all interview and uh, yeah, Observer yeah. about it. Oh, okay. Um. It was incredible. Like Amazon took the book down because they said it wasn't a book, <laughs> even though there's another book with 200 pages of uh, just blank pages because it was like called "What Do Men Think About Other Than Sex?" and it's just <laughs> blank. <laughs> um, but yeah, like uh. when when I hear that, you know, a lot of people are you know going into the ego of like, oh, can I even become an Amazon bestselling author? It's like yeah. that's meaningless right now. Yeah, I I think it's meaningless. Yeah. And, it makes sense. Even if there is some market value to to that still, yeah. there won't be in two or three years. Right. So now there is some market value in New York Times and hitting that list, plus the discovery mechanism that is the New York Times list. Yeah. But again, super hard to get there. Uh, I think with that effort, you can do a lot more like start a six-figure or seven-figure per year business, lever- you know, have all the customer information from the people that buy the book that you can build an even bigger business off of. There's... Mm-hmm. Uh, more control over the content because when you sign away a book right. deal, you lose all the content. Yeah. And now we're in a world where you can make two, three, four, five pieces of high quality content off one piece of content. So you could take this interview and turn it into an article and turn it into social media tiles and right. turn it into uh, click to tweet yeah. you know, things and buffer out a bunch of quotes. Like you can make 10 different high quality things from this yeah. one interview. Uh, and so I think it's really important to actually own that content. Yeah. Uh, and you know, owning how it's sold allows you to then bring in other partners and do whatever you, you want do whatever you want like yeah. and be a smart marketer right so that's a good point because a lot of i think traditionally you're so limited like i was i think it was it was greg cardone or somebody he was like oh i can't release this yet or i can't do this yet yeah. and it, he still did really well because he's got a huge audience but that's a good point yeah so you know, i i wrote like a seven thousand word blog post on this mm-hmm. uh if you go to jaredkleinercom slash marketing plan with the link in there uh, i literally map out like 90 percent of the marketing plan for three billion under 30. Sweet. but a lot of it was this very strategic thinking of like what do i actually want to accomplish with this book launch yeah. from a business standpoint and from a mission standpoint yeah. uh and i thought fo- i found that for sub seven figure authors meaning you're not getting an advance offer of a million or more yeah uh and you uh don't have like other if you have like one or two other really big businesses that you're running it might make sense to kind of hand off the publishing to someone else yeah uh but i you know if if you don't if you're not getting a seven figure advance and this could be one of your that's super rare rare, that's neil strauss level that's keith ferrazzi that's uh tim ferris tucker max like that's their level yeah yeah um so unless you're there or unless you like if if the book and or the monies that could come indirectly from the book could be your main channel or two of income mm-hmm. then you should at least explore a self-publishing option yeah. where you control everything uh and that's what we did for three billion under 30. uh i've you know been able to bring on various joint venture partners to help mm-hmm. me promote the book some of them with uh, six figure email lists and yep. you know, like 120,000 people will get a message about the book today yep. or, you know, whenever this goes out and then ongoing, you know, I, I had 75, you know, top performing millennials ranging from the founder of WordPress, Matt Mullenweg to a mm. two time defending fittest woman in the world to social media influencers like Jake Paul, like all these people that are featured in my book actually gave me, uh, their time. And whether it was on a quick interview or they actually wrote their own stories, like they all bought into this vision. Yeah. And there's a there's a real mission behind the book to get as many people as possible to act on their passions in life, mm-hmm. uh, and then start 
working together to solve big pressing problems for society. And so I need to, that, that's really important to me. And I need to align that mission with a financial incentive to continue yeah. selling books. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm, I can do that with this method of publishing. Right. In the past, uh, you know, normally books stop getting promoted after the second or third week of it being on sale because there's no real incentive for an author anymore to sell it. Yep. Like they, they try really hard for that first week and for pre-launch for the allure of potentially hitting a New York Times list or for a pretty good yeah. shot at it. Uh, and maybe they pick up like some other stuff along the way. Like we picked up an Axiom Business Book Award. We picked up like nice. Amazon stuff. We were like IBM's Book of the Month. There was like, you know, a bunch of press, which is super valuable yep. long term. Um, but after you get all that, like you've already increased your speaking fees. You've already... Uh, you've gotten all the social proof you could amass in that time frame, and yeah. you lose financial incentive. Mm. With my books specifically, with so many other people buying into my ideas and my visions, yeah. I feel obligated to attach a financial incentive mm -hmm. to getting these stories shared as much as possible. Yeah. So with three billion under thirty, I'm able to do that. And you know, by not selling through a retailer, by not selling through Amazon, instead selling through my own site. I can collect an email address and a name and a phone number That's amazing. That's for valuable. everyone who's buying the book. And so I can actually provide them value long term. Yeah. And I can provide value to my book contributors long term. You know, yeah. So as I build a bigger platform for myself, suddenly I have a lot of leverage to then go back to Matt from WordPress. Right. And whenever he has a big you know, announcement to share with the world or just something really valuable to share with the world, mm -hmm. I can do what Tim Ferriss did with his blog and like you know, ask them to share that and right. have this be a, a, a hub for really valuable information and for as a platform to, to share the work of my book contributors. So for all these reasons and more, you know, it's, it's hard to go into this yeah. in 15 minutes, but uh, I, you have to put your ego aside, you know, figure out what the best strategic option is for your, you know, business or your, you know, situation mm -hmm. and stick to that regardless of the ego that you're putting aside, regardless of the you know, status quo of the industry who will tell you otherwise. Mm -hmm. uh, those are those are the hard things to hear and not listen to. Uh, yeah. But it's if you can find your own niche and your own uh, path that's definitely different from the norm and makes sense logically, mm -hmm. that's the best chance you're going to get at having some sort of exponential rise for a, a big business, etc. Yeah, like that's that by definition, like you have to do something different than everyone else. No, that's amazing. I think I think this is the more unconventional traditional publishing is it's got its system. It works for some people, you know, at right. that Tim Ferriss level. Maybe it makes sense. Maybe it doesn't. But I really like what you're doing and how you're sharing what you're doing. It kind of goes with what we were talking about earlier about just being a good person and, and, and being honest and sharing and authentic and stuff like that. I think authenticity is something yeah. missing. I think people try to engineer authenticity. I was interviewing Scooter Braun recently. Yeah, he, I saw that. Yeah, and he was saying that people try to like in, re, like engineer authenticity, and it's like no, it's like it's just you, you know you, that's that's not something you want to engineer. You want to just be a good person and be authentic <laughs> in the first place. You want to just be that rather you can than be authentic as a bad person, like as long as you're being honest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that that's a that could be no your pressure to be a good person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that could that's your character. That's who you are. Just be who you are. Like it's not yeah. it's. I think people, and I think there's some probably some stories in, in your book that would probably explain this as well, um, but I think there are people that sort of have this weird fake vibe that it's just not authentic, and people know that right away. When they see inauthenticity, they know that right away. You know that right away. So who are some, who are some other people in the book? You've got, you've got Gerard Adams. He's amazing. You've got Jake Paul, Joel Brown. What's another good story from the book? Yeah, so... Yeah, I mean, from like entrepreneurial world, there's like Anil yeah. Patel, there's the co-founder yeah. of Duolingo, which is mm -hmm. a half a billion or billion dollar company. That's an company. awesome app, by the way. I've learned, uh, I've learned like three languages on that. <laughs> Not learned, but started uh, to learn. You have founders of uh, up and coming media platforms like Odyssey Online, which has raised over $30 million and uh, they're they're busting out. You have uh, Tiffany Pham from Mogul. Uh, yeah. You have Taylor Freeman from Upload VR mm -hmm. and Upload VR was like the hottest uh seed startup in silicon valley at one point yeah now they're like they're doing stuff behind the scenes that will like blow the roof off of mm. everyone uh we got some vcs in the book but then like outside of this like entrepreneurial vc world tech world that we all know like we yeah. have some new york times best-selling authors um that were like trained by aj jacobs mm. we have the two-time defending fittest woman in the world katrine davis Doder, who's is Icelandic, and she's only the second person to ever repeat as a female in the CrossFit Games. Uh, you have 
the guy who discovered NBA All Star Anthony Davis. Wow. Uh, which is he's so cool. And, and like more importantly than that, he started a an organization that has helped uh, kids in inner city Chicago get millions of dollars worth of scholarships because these at risk youth who are really great high school basketball players. Uh, can get connected to these D1, D2, D3 basketball coaches, all of whom have scholarships to give. Mm. And he puts on this tournament every year where that transaction can take place. And so he's helped hundreds of families uh, really get out of at-risk areas and into a better life, uh, which is much more meaningful than you know, discovering Anthony yeah. Davis. Because Anthony Davis would have been discovered yeah, yeah. regardless of uh, you know Daniel. And he shares this in the book. He's like, you know, Anthony would have been there without me. He also was one of the first people to interview Derrick Rose and like mm-hmm. a lot of those players from the Chicago area. But he's like, they all would have made it without me throwing their clip on YouTube. Like, <laughs> they're them. And yeah. you know, he's he's like, this is the legacy I can leave. Um, and then you have stories like uh, Aziz Diab, who's a Syrian war refugee. Wow. Uh, and his he like ends the book. There's five mm-hmm. parts of the book. There's start, risk, journey, learn, and succeed, mm-hmm. which are five stages to finding and acting on your passions in life. And he's like the very last uh, story in the book. And he's like, shit, if you're alive, then you're successful. Because he had to go through legit, like very, like like the same exact experiences that Holocaust survivors had to go through. Mm. He went through to escape yeah. Syria and like left his family behind, had to leave the country through a, you know, a huge truck with a tiny air hole in the, in the back so that 70 people could breathe, the people passing wow. out in the back. That's intense. Like skipped through five different countries eventually made it to Germany, uh, which he wanted to study there when he was a kid, so it actually worked out mm. uh, to be a, a pretty nice destination. Uh, now he's studying mechatronics and like really smart kid. He's, he's uh, volunteering to help other Syrian war refugees find their way in, in mm. Germany. Um, mm. So he's like super inspiring. Mm. And you know, as, uh, as everything has been happening in Syria, I've been asking him mm. like, what, what does he think about it? And, and just the, like, I almost tear up every time I see a response from him or every time we hop on Skype. Yeah. Um, but there's some stories like that in there. And, and one of the things I've loved about this book series, both the 2 billion under 20 and 3 billion under 30 is I have, I've almost used the platform that a Jake Paul, that a Matt Mullenweg, you know, Karen Civil, who's the uh, hip mop or she's the manager for YG, GZ, Nipsey Hustle, mm. uh, does some work with Nicki Minaj. Uh, I've used their platform to almost show light to these like untold stories yeah. or these stories from people you would never hear about. Uh, there's another girl, uh, Benaz, who's a uh, motor superbike rider wow. in Iran, and it's illegal for women to have licenses in Iran. So she has like yeah, this very right. special like off-road license, and then has to go race professionally in other countries. <laughs> it's and now she's become this huge women's rights champion because uh, she's actively like fighting to change those laws. But yeah. there's stories in there that I, I'm just so uh, grateful and humble to be able to share with a bigger population yeah. and, and almost like leverage the following of these other you know amazing people to bring light to those stories and and vice versa. Yeah. There's there's a really nice diversity to this series so far, uh, both with two billion under twenty and and now three billion under thirty. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, where yeah. can, so we'll have links all over the place, but where can people find out more about the book? So not Amazon, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but just three billion under thirty dot com. Uh, you'll have a, a link yeah. you know, below as well. Yeah. And uh, that's it. You know, feel free to email me, jared at 3billionunder30.com. I'd love to hear feedback and what you thought of our conversation. Uh, I do really love that feedback and <laughs> answer emails. So Thanks a lot, man. Yeah, really appreciate thanks it. for having me. Yeah.